this company. So, uh, uh, before I start, uh, so tomorrow your lab will be starting. Uh, uh, you have to download that uh, software. In case you have any problem, please contact your TA, write to them or any of the TAs. Uh, you can write to them and you can get the answer. And uh, so tomorrow will be an introductory exercise of a software tool, which we normally use in communication system. And the next Friday will be on the AM. Um, by that time, we'll finish the AM part also. Uh, now, moving further, uh, let's talk about the bandwidth of the AM signal. Uh, so, if you recall, uh, we have got this expression for amplitude modulation, which is very straightforward, that it is given by a carrier frequency, uh, which has got uh, the amplitude of VC and uh, frequency of uh, VC, uh, sorry, FC. And then uh, we have two sidebands, one is FC minus FM. And another is FC plus FM, or side frequencies we call. A sideband we normally use when there are number of frequencies and so on, which we'll discuss slightly uh, later uh, today itself. And their amplitudes are given by MAVC by 2. Now, if you see here, uh, we have taken one example uh, where I've taken the carrier frequency as 1 megahertz. And uh, modulating frequency or the message frequency as 1 kilohertz, lower frequency. And let's say VC is 1 volt and uh, modulation uh, index is 0.5 or 50%. Obviously, in that case, my FC minus FM becomes 0.999 megahertz, and FC plus FM is 1.001 megahertz, if I use uh, simple mathematics. So the bandwidth of the AM signal is uh, given by uh, the lowest frequency and the up highest frequency and the gap between the two frequencies. So here, my highest frequency is FC plus FM and the lowest frequency is FC minus FM. So bandwidth of the AM signal we defined as FC plus FM minus FC minus FM. So that will give you twice of FM. That means the bandwidth of the AM signal is twice of the modulating frequency signal, message signal. Or other way around also we can write down if I have to find what is the maximum uh, modulating frequency, it should be bandwidth of the AM signal by two. So in this example, um, we find that the two frequencies are 0.999 megahertz and 1.001 megahertz. And the amplitudes turned out to be 0.25 volt and 0.25 volt and the carrier. That means uh, in my uh, uh, this thing, uh, A modulation, we get the three frequencies. One, the carrier itself, which is the original frequency, and the two other terms, which were the side frequencies, lower side frequency and upper side frequencies. So what it means, suppose uh, I am uh, uh, speaking at a certain frequency, let's say 5 kilohertz, and I want to transmit uh, to you uh, through AM, then the bandwidth that I require must be twice of FM. That means twice of 5 kilohertz. So it gives you 10 kilohertz. So that means the 10 kilohertz bandwidth is required so that the faithful reproduction of the sound at your end. Faithful reproduction of the sound, we always use the word fidelity. We say na, Wi Fi, Hi Fi. So, high frequency fidelity, wireless frequency fidelity, Wi Fi. So, fidelity means uh, the faithful reproduction of the your sound signal or the speech signal. So, here, my uh, for the faithful reproduction, I need to have a bandwidth of twice my speech frequency, 5 kilohertz. If, I, if my fre frequency is 3 kilohertz, then I need a bandwidth of 6 kilohertz. And that is the same thing when you have the AM radio, uh, you tune the AM radio. Uh, what you are tuning is basically you are changing the frequency. And because you are changing the frequency, you are going to the coming to the new station. Okay. And these stations are separated by 10 kilohertz or something like that. Or whatever the highest frequency. So this is what for a simple AM sinusoidal signal. Now we go uh, for a complex one. So... So I wanted to know what is the amplitude modulation for a complex uh, modulating or message signal. So far we have modulating. We have understood it is uh, it is your. Message signal only. Okay. 
now here when i meant by complex what i mean that i have uh, two or more sinusoidal signals still we are assuming the signals are sinusoidal signals uh, sinusoidal uh, signals which are message signals let's say fm1 fm2 and so on then how my equation becomes here my equation will be now for the em signal will be on the same lines and still we have the one carrier frequency so just like in the case of an orchestra as i told you there are many instruments are there uh, tabla harmonium and so on and they are having the different frequencies uh, even i may be uh, singing also so my speech frequency is also there so then i may be having so many frequencies let's say one is fm1 fm2 fm3 and so on and my carrier is the same so we keep the carrier same and the carrier frequency is uh, the same which is fc then how my em signal will look it is on the same line it is given as v a m t is equal to i will get the same thing sin uh, 2 pi f c d t okay and then we'll have another one which is uh, having the amplitude ma1 v c by 2 cos 2 pi fc minus fm1 t so that is for the first modulating frequency and the next part is again ma1 vc by 2 the addition because when we are multiplying the two frequencies if you see we are getting the uh, subtraction and addition that is the trigonometric identity we have used sin a sin b is equal to cos a plus b plus cos a minus b by 2 so that is the same thing we have used here so it is the same but now i have fm 1 t so that becomes my plus part but now we'll have additional the two components because there is another frequency which is given as ma2 obviously its modulation index will be different vc by 2 cos again 2 pi fc minus fm2 t plus or not plus it will be minus here again minus ma by vc by 2 cos 2 pi fc minus fm2 so this becomes t and so on if i have more components i will have something like this so basically if i have many frequencies Uh, FM one, FM two, and all those things. I will get so many components, and in that case, if I see the spectrum, it will look like this, which we have seen in the previous one. How my spectrum will look? So it will be looking like this. This is my the carrier frequency, and we see. And let's say I have got two frequencies, so I will get one here, uh, some amplitude, let's say which is FC plus FM one, and another one is fc plus fm2 and also on this side fc minus fm1 and on this side fc minus fm2 and so on and here the amplitudes will be something given by ma1 vc by 2 here also it is the same ma1 vc by 2 because that is for the first modulating frequency and it is given by ma2 vc2 by 2 and here also ma2 vc by 2 so this is a subscript okay so i'll get many frequencies many this thing now in this case my bandwidth uh, of the cm signal uh, please note that last time we have this thing so here my bandwidth will be slightly different so in this case my bandwidth will be given by this is the bandwidth so this becomes my bandwidth that means the lowest frequency if i have got it becomes my bandwidth so in this case my bandwidth will become uh, 
the lowest frequency. Let's say your FC is equal to 1 megahertz. FM1 becomes equal to 1 kilohertz. And I have another modulating signal, 2 kilohertz. So in this case, uh, I will get something like this. So this becomes a 1.0 kilohertz. I will get this frequency as 1.001. Uh, so this is in megahertz. And this becomes 1.002 megahertz for this example, if I take. And this becomes a 0.999 megahertz. And this becomes 0.998 megahertz so this becomes my uh, various things and if i have got different uh, modulation index let's say ma1 is equal to uh, i keep it same 0.5 and let's say ma2 is something i would say 0.2 then you can work out uh, it will be equal to one volt and vc is equal to one volt so in this case it turns out to be uh, 0.25 volt as we have seen in the previously but this turns out to be 0.1 volt and also this turns out to be 0.25 volt and this turns out to be 0.1 volt for this example. So that means uh, I will get a uh, uh, number of frequencies which will need to be simultaneously transmitted using amplitude modulation over a single carrier. So this is uh, my frequency spectrum. Obviously, in this case, my bandwidth will become uh, Bandwidth will become uh, your lowest frequency and the highest frequency. So in this case, it becomes 1.002 minus 0.998. And that is, you can calculate. So that becomes my bandwidth, which is uh, from this frequency up to this frequency. So obviously, my bandwidth will increase here. Now here, we have seen that uh, in such cases, I may be having a different modulation indices. Okay. Uh, like uh, when we play an orchestra, if you see, uh, a lot of efforts goes in uh, setting up the orchestra. Uh, when you must have gone for a musical uh, evening or musical night, you must have seen they take almost uh, one hour or two hours uh, before setting up these things. Because uh, they want to, that it should not happen that my flute is overpowering or my harmonium is overpowering. There should be a big balance and so on. So they change the modulation depth of each of the frequency or each of the instrument and that's what we try to get the balance things in so somewhere you will get a modulation index of 0.5 another place you you may look for a modulation index of 0.2 and so on and obviously uh, when we play with the modulation indexes that means we are playing with the uh, amplitude because amplitude is decided by ma vc by 2 obviously ma doesn't have any, any unit and vc has got the unit of volt and that's what we do here so what is the so when we do this thing uh, we should have one what we call the effective modulation index okay so uh, we introduce this thing uh, what should be the modulation index that means the overall uh, modulation index uh, of the complex am signal like the one which we have just discussed in this case, uh, it is given as MT, which I am saying the modulation, total modulation index or total modulation index. So total modulation index, so this is, uh, is given as under root of MA1 square plus MA2 square plus and so on. So this becomes my total modulation index if I have many signals overall. In the previous case, when we have only single signal, modulation index is just one. But in this case, my overall modulation index becomes like this, which we are MA1, MA2, we have discussed, are uh, modulation index of individual uh, modulating. As I said, we use the word modulating for the message signal, but I am writing again and again. Signals, what are those? FM1, FM2, and so on, respectively. 
Okay. So that is how I define this one. Uh, let's take one example based on this. As I said, I always prefer to give you example to get a clear understanding. So if I take this example, uh, suppose I got a VC is uh, 10 volt and VM1 is equal to 2 volts, VM2 is equal to 3 volt and VM4 is equal to 4 volt. Then I need to find what is my MT. So for that, what we do here, first we'll find MA1, which is given as VM1 over VC, as you have seen. Uh, so in this case, it is given by 2 by 10, it is 0 0.2. MA2 is VM2 by VC, so it can't exceed 100%. So it turns out to be 3 by 10, and that means 0 0.3, no units. And MA3 turns out to be uh, VM3. Sorry. Over VC, and which turns out to be, uh, let's say, 4 by 10, 0.4. So my MT will become under root of MA1 square plus MA2 square plus MA3 square. So in this case, it turns out to be 0.2 square plus 0.3 square plus 0.4 square and that turns out to be 0.538. That means the overall modulation index of such a complex signal, which have got many message frequencies, but a single carrier turns out to be uh, uh, 0.538. Now moving further, uh, so these are very straightforward, simple. Uh, moving further, let me uh, tell you about the power. See, when we transmit a signal, what we are transmitting, Though mathematically we are working in terms of voltage and current, just give me a minute. So, uh, uh, what actually when we are doing the calculation, we are working in terms of voltage and current. But basically, when we transmit a signal over a wireless or any other channel, we transmit the power. So we have to understand how much the power is getting transmitted, especially in the carrier or in the sidebands. So we normally, as I said, every time in the communication system, we have to deal with the voltages and current while understanding, while mathematically this thing. Like so far, we have done only in terms of the voltages, uh, MA, VC, 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 VM1, VM2, and so on. But what we actually transmit, again, I'm stressing, we transmit the power. So we have to understand how much power we are transmitting, because that is the real understanding for the uh, uh, practical system point of view. So we talk about the next topic, which is called the AM power distribution. So that means, uh, as I said, when we have different AM radio, we have different uh, stations like Vivid Bharti, it is tuned at one particular frequency. Then we have another station. It is tuned at one, another particular frequency. And there we take normally, uh, we transmit audio only. We never transmit a video uh, in AM radio. So typically the highest signals are 5 megahertz or something like that, high flow, so 5 kilohertz. So that's why the each station is given a bandwidth of 10 kilohertz. So if I demand a, a station from them, they will give me uh, a station uh, at a particular frequency, but having a bandwidth of 10 kilohertz. Okay. Now, AM power distribution. So basically, again, we look for the uh, single frequency, which is what we call the lower side frequency or upper side frequency or lower side band or upper side band. So in this case, uh, your total power power in AM signal. Again, I take a single tone. Single tone means single message single tone or single message signal, if I got. So in this case, it is equal to the carrier power. What is the power in the carrier frequency? Plus lower sideband power, lower sideband power. Sometimes we use the word power, um, uh, band, and sometimes we use the word frequency. Like in the previous case, when I have too many frequencies, uh, uh, if you see in this one, uh, in this particular example, uh, here, so this becomes my 
lower side bind. So in this case, we talk about the uh, lowest. Uh, we speak in terms of the band. So this becomes my lower side band because it is consist of no many frequencies. Band means many frequencies, like a band is there. Uh, so we know that they are playing with the number of persons and so on. So this becomes my upper side band. So if it is a single frequency, then we talk about the lower side frequency or upper side frequency. Otherwise, it is a number of frequencies. So we can talk about uh, lower side band or upper side band. But sometimes we generally speak in terms of lower side band and upper side band, even assuming that there is only one frequency uh, in the band. So LSB and USB are very common things uh, rather than uh, talking about the frequency. But yes, various books, various have various notation. But yes, we can use the lower side band and upper side band. Band will be one frequency or many frequencies. And then there is also a power which is in the upper side band. Now here, I could write down this as the total power in AM is equal to PC plus P lower side band plus P upper side band. You can use the small letters or capital letters as suffix. It doesn't matter. And this, uh, if I assume, because power, we need a resistance, OK? V square by R. So if I assume that this AM signal, I am writing each and every step for you, appear across a load. Because to define power, we must have a load resistor, which we typically call the load resistance, RL. Okay, then we can say that your power is equal to RMS value by RL, a square of the RMS value of the voltage. Okay, so this is the voltage RMS. We always speak in terms of the uh, one minute, I can write down clearly RMS value of the voltage. V squared by R. So, but that V is always the RMS voltage, which we have seen is called the, uh, I've already told you, RMS means root mean square or effective voltage. Okay, so th the thing what we have mentioned here, it is given as, so RMS voltage is given as, uh, as I told you already, it is given as peak voltage by root 2. Sometimes it is also called the effective voltage. So peak voltage, uh, effective voltage is given as peak voltage by root 2. Okay. Now in the previous example, uh, wherever uh, uh, I go to this uh, equation again, which is what we have learned, recall. So I use that expression again, again, which is very easy to write. VAMT is equal to VC sine. Omega C also you can use, but we now normally use 2 pi FCT plus uh, MA VC by 2 sine 2 pi, uh, sorry, uh, what was, uh, because we are using cos here, cos Two pi F C minus F M T plus. So this is the same expression. Nothing great. I am doing just uh, cos two pi F C plus F M T. Okay. So this is something which we have learned. Now, if I want to uh, speak in terms of power, uh, so what is my carrier power? Let's see the carrier power. So. Carrier power PC is equal to RMS voltage of carrier divided by root 2. That is my RMS voltage. As I told you, and go to the previous slide and look for this. Uh, I put it in this one. Uh, 
RMS voltage of the uh, value of the voltage square by RL. Okay, so that is my power, and the uh, RMS voltage is given by peak voltage by root two. Now here it is given as peak voltage by root two. So your carrier power turns out to be peak voltage by root two. Sorry, my uh, one minute. I can write down one for you clearly. Carrier square by RL. So I could write down this as peak voltage of carrier by root two square by RL. And this peak voltage of carrier is given as. Uh, and we see here vc square oh uh, sorry vc by root 2 square over rl because this is the what we are talking about as we have seen it is the peak voltage of carrier peak voltage of carrier but carrier power is defined always as with respect to the rms voltage of the carrier so first we find the rms voltage of the carrier square v square by r we know that because it is given as v square by r and then peak voltage of carrier by root 2 so i converted rms to peak voltage because what we have here is the peak voltage so peak voltage is vc by root 2 square by rl so it becomes uh, your vc square by 2 rl so that is the power contained in the carrier okay so this is the power contained in the carrier. Now in the same way, uh, this is the I. So same way, these are same. Amplitude are the same. Don't uh, look for the negative sign, okay? But it is the amplitude that is the same for the two side frequencies. So if I have the lower side frequency power of the lower side frequency is equal to the power of upper side frequency and how it is given by so power uh, we now calculate i use the black color only power of lower side band or upper side band is same which is given as on the same line as we have what we got is here is uh, uh, if you recall I will go to that one MAVC by 2. So MAVC by 2. Again, we convert into this one root 2 square by RL. Okay. So it turns out to be MA square by 4. Am I right? MA square, VC square, and it turns out to be. Uh, 2 to the 4 and 2, 8, 8 RL. Okay, so it turns out to be this one. On the same line, because it is MAVC by 2 is the peak amplitude. This is nothing if I mention here. It, oh, sorry. This is the peak amplitude peak voltage which i convert it into the rms voltage the square of that rl so it turns out to be this one so i can write down this equation also as m a square vc by 2 so it becomes uh, m a square by 4 into pc again in terms of the carrier because we have seen in the previous expression your pc is nothing it is vc square by 2 rl so your power of lower side band is equal to power of upper side band is given by this expression. We have already seen a PC in the previous slide. PC is equal to V square by 2 RL. But power in the lower side band is given by 
this one so i highlight it in the red so this is again an important thing which you have learned today then the power that is getting transmitted in the upper segment and lower segment is given by ma square by 4 into power in the carrier okay so and they both are same plsp is equal to p uh, upper segment ma square by 4 pc so my total sideband power total uh, sideband power how is how much power becomes p sideband is equal to p lower sideband plus p upper sideband and that means it becomes ma square by 4 by pc plus ma square 4 pc so it becomes ma square by 2 So that is the total sideband power. So my total sideband power becomes uh, double of the either sideband and the carrier power is uh, also there. Okay. So this is the total sideband power. So I could write down power total sideband, SP only, no LSP or uh, sometimes I'm using the small letters, sometimes capital letters, please excuse me for that, but it means the same thing. Okay. So power in the sideband is equal to m a square 2 by or multiplied by the power in the carrier so what is my total power in am so therefore my total power in am signal pm is equal to pc plus p lower sideband plus p upper sideband or whatever we just now use the word power in sideband so it turns out to be PC plus MA square by 4 PC plus MA square by 4 PC. So it becomes PC plus MA square by 2 PC. That is the power inside band. Or I could write down this as PC 1 plus MA square by 2. So that is the total power that is getting transmitted in AM. This is the total power in the AM signals is very simple. So what we have learned power in the carrier if it's PC, power in the side frequency is MA square by 4 into PC. But we have two side bands each carrying the same voltage, so same power. So in both the case, the power of the side uh, band becomes MA square by 2 PC. So the total power becomes PC 1 plus MA square by 2. Now suppose I take one example, a, a very uh, day to day example. Uh, I have got an AM broadcast st station, AM radio. Uh, let's say a transmitter, transmitter has a carrier power of 40 kilowatt. Find total power that would be produced with this, let's say 80 percent of modulation okay so how to solve this is very simple here my ma is 0.8 since ma is given in terms of percentage 80 percent given so your ma becomes 0.8 so my p or am i need to find the total power is equal to pc 1 plus ma square by 2 so it turns out to be 40 kilowatt into 1 plus 0.8 square by 2 so it turns out to be 52.8 kilowatt that means sir the power that is getting transmitted in this AM broadcasting system for a modulation depth of uh, 80%, ideally we want a 100% modulation, okay, but not over modulation or not under modulation. Over modulation, we have seen that it leads to this, uh, what we call the spectrum is getting spreaded and so on. So that is not desirable. Splatter, we have used the word splatter, that if you, uh, in your dish, uh, if you have 
filled the dish with uh, more than the uh, quantity it is meant for, it will splatter. It will be thrown out. So like here also, it will be splatter and thrown out. So this is uh, what we have learned uh, in the case of how to go for this one. So if I plot uh, the frequency versus uh, power, what we have learned. So if it is a PC for my carrier frequency, I have got uh, F upper side frequency, F lower side frequency, or upper side band or lower side band. As I said, whatever you call LSP or F upper side band. Okay. So here my power is PC. Here my power is power in the lower side band is equal to M A square PC by four. M square by four into PC. And here also it is the same power m a square by 4 into pc okay so this is the total power so what we have seen here some uh, conclusion we can have first thing is your carrier power is independent of modulation whatever it doesn't depend on modulation index modulation index and the additional power in AM signal, it goes into two side mates. Okay. Now, something is very important we have to see. Suppose uh, I have 100% modulation. Let's say if I got 100% modulation, 100% modulation means M A is equal to 1. Then in this case, uh, my power carrier will be P C and power of uh, lower side band is equal to M A square by 4 into P C. So it becomes uh, P C by 4 and power in upper side band also is P C by 4. So in this case, your uh, power in sideband is equal to power in carrier by 2 for 100% modulation. That means uh, total sideband power is equal to half of the carrier power. That's something we have to understand. Let's do one, uh, one example based on our understanding again. So I take an example. And I take the example something like this. Uh, let uh, VC is equal to 100 volt, RL is equal to 50 ohms. Okay, modulation index is given to be 1. Okay, uh, then in this case, uh, uh, we find what is uh, the carrier power, what we find uh, power in lower side band. And then we find what is the power in upper side band that also we need to find out. And let's say also we need to find what is my total power. And that means the total power we need to find and so on. And then we can ask you to sketch the spectrum. How my spectrum will look here. So for this, uh, we solved it. Uh, Let's solve this PC. PC is nothing. It is VC square by 2 RL. We have learned. So in this case, it turns out to be 100 square by 2 into 50. Okay. Uh, RL. RL is given to be 50 ohms. So it turns out to be 100 watt. Because we are speaking in terms of voltage and current. Uh, volt and so on. And similarly, I can calculate uh, uh, PLSP, which is given as m a square by 4 into p c so now we have already calculated p c so it becomes 1 square by 4 into 100 which turns out to be 25 watt and p upper side band is nothing it is equal to p lower side band so that is also 25 watt 
okay so uh, total sideband power becomes equal to 50 watt that is your total sideband power so 100 watt uh, that is uh, is goes into the carrier 25 watt goes into each of the sidebands so that means 50 watt total sideband power and then i can calculate the total uh, power am which is given as pc 1 plus ma square by 2 so in this case it turns out to be 100 watt 1 plus 1 square by 2 so total power becomes 150 watt so total power that is getting transmitted is 150 watt of which 100 watt goes into the carrier and 25 watt goes into the one sideband another 25 watt goes into the second sideband so in this case my spectrum will look like this if i plot i have this carrier frequency i have this upper sideband i have this lower sideband so here my power is 100 watt what we calculated and this is too large a value this is too large a value so this becomes my uh, p upper side band is equal to 25 watt and p lower side band is again equal to 25 watt so in this case the power goes here uh, maximum power goes into the carrier okay now here uh, basically my uh, message or information where my information is contained uh, my information is contained if you see this particular expression if you see this particular effects expression of am signal uh, which is uh, i have written many times yes where my information is contained what is my information fm so my information is contained in the lower side frequency and upper side frequency my information is not contained in the carrier because there is no FM there. It is only FC. So, as I told you, the child is the intelligent signal. Okay, child is the master signal which we want to ask him to cross the road. So, my information is contained in the lower side frequency because there is FM here. And my information is contained in the upper side frequency also because uh, FM is there. Information is not the contained in the carrier. So, it is a waste. So my information is contained only in the lower side frequency and the upper side frequency. So keeping that thing in mind, uh, we talk about the efficiency. How efficient is my AM broadcasting system? Okay. So we introduce this thing, what is called the transmission efficiency of an AM signal. So we started with the expression for the AM signal, then we understood the uh, uh, what is the voltages in that one and then we convert it into a power what is the power contained in the carrier what is the power contained in the sidebands and now we talk about the transmission efficiency of an am signal how efficient is this system okay so this is given as uh, we write as uh, eta p am power in am so Eta is represented as uh, transmission efficiency. There are various no notation for that, but uh, you can keep uh, this thing in mind. It is given as power in the sideband over power, the total power. So this is nothing. It is the power in sideband over the total AM power, which is the sum of carrier power and lower sideband and upper sideband okay because uh, as i said the information is contained in the sideband because we have seen information is contained in sideband what is my information that is the message signal frequency and not in carrier and because my information is not contained in the carrier uh, that we don't treat. So it is the power in the sideband over the total power in the AM band. So in this case, so this becomes my efficiency. Let's talk about this thing. So which means uh, 
your eta p a m is equal to power in sideband over power in a m which we have calculated as m a square by 2 into p c over p c 1 plus m a square by 2 that is the total power we have calculated and that is the total power in the sideband m a square by 4 p c plus m a square by 4 p c so this becomes like this so if i calculate this thing it will become uh, p c will cancel with p c so it will become m a square by 2 so it becomes m a square by 2 plus m a square so that becomes my efficiency of So this becomes my efficiency. Okay. So suppose uh, I have a uh, hundred percent modulation, which is the desirable form of modulation. Okay. That is always desirable. Okay. Uh, your MA is equal to one, and therefore, in this case, eta turns out to be uh, one square over two plus one square. That means 1 by 3. So, your it implies that your maximum uh, transmission efficiency power efficiency of AM signal is 1 by 3 into 100 percent. That means 33.33 .33%. So this is something what we have learned that it is highly inefficient. So AM system is highly inefficient system uh, or highly inefficient method of analog modulation because my two third of the power is wasted in the carrier power. Okay. So what we imply from here, it implies that your AM is highly inefficient system but that is how the communication started unless we understand am we can't understand fm and other communication highly uh, inefficient uh, method of analog modulation that means if we modulate using amplitude modulation it is very inefficient why because your uh, 2 by 3 of, uh, I would say, total AM power, power is wasted in carrier, okay, which doesn't carry the information, okay. So, this is uh, something we have to understand, that carrier we are using that is the advantage but basically my two third of the power because we have seen that example of 150 watt see previous example if you see the previous example of 150 watt 100 watt in carrier and 50 watt in sideband in sideband so it is the two third of the power is wasted in the carrier two third of 150 so it turns out to be uh, which is nothing, it is 2 by 3 into 150 is wasted in the carrier because it doesn't carry the information. So, this is a, a, a very inefficient uh, form of the A modulation. Moving further, uh, we are just close to this uh, thing uh, in the AM part. Uh, let's see another topic which is also related to this, what we call the variation of AM power with modulation index. How my AM power varies with the modulation index. Okay, so in this case, uh, if I have to plot AM power versus modulation index, okay, so that is something we have to understand. So, how to go for that? So, total AM power we have seen is equal to PC1 plus m a square by 2 okay or p a m over p c is equal to 1 plus m a square by 2 
Now, if we take the different cases for M A equal to, let's say, if I take 0.5, your P A M over P C turns out to be 1.25. Uh, uh, no, it, it will become 1.125. Uh, okay. Or I would say 112.5% of PC. That is 12.5% more that of carrier. Okay. And if I increase to M equal to 1, your PAM over PC turns out to be just taking one example, 1.5. That means 150% of PC, which means 50% more that of carrier power. Okay. So if I plot uh, this thing uh, in this way, what we have just seen, if I plot this MA, and take various values from 0, let's say 0 0.5 and 1.0. And sometimes it is over modulation also. So let's take something 1.5 also. So if I take the over modulation case also, that is also possible. Uh, one minute. Okay, so here I take zero. So I plot MA here and I plot PAM versus PC here. And if I take zero here, 0.5 here, 100% modulation 1.0, case of over modulation 1.5. And if I plot it, uh, it turns out to be one. Let's say one and something like this if i plot 1.5 2.0 you will get you will plot this thing you will find it is something like this you will get a plot like this so for 0.5 uh, if i say it turns out to be uh, 1.125 and for one it turns out to be this value turns out to be 1.5 okay so this is how my um, the variation of modulation index uh, or the total power with respect to the modulation index. Now, just to finish the topic of AM, uh, uh, we talk in, sometimes because we speak in terms of voltage. But as I said, what we transmit is actually the power. And we have seen that uh, uh, most of the carrier power uh, doesn't uh, is wasted. Uh, because it doesn't carry the information, almost two thirds. If I take the hundred percent uh, modulation, and the power that is really useful, uh, it goes into the side frequencies because there the information is contained. FC minus FM and FC plus FM. FM is there. Okay, so most of the power uh, gets wasted. So with hundred percent modulation, you is, we have seen that the transmission efficiency turns out to be thirty-three point three percent only, which is not a good uh, efficient. So just to make the story complete, as I said, uh, we also speak in terms of the current. So uh, we talk about AM current distribution, though we have speak in terms of voltage. So current is on the same line, as I said. But yes, to make the story complete, sometimes we speak in terms of the current. Uh, so what we have learned is already your PAM is equal to, uh, I could write down this as I square, uh, the total current into R. That is how we define the current. So uh, IT is uh, nothing. It is the total current in AM transmitter. OK. And R is the resistance. OK. So that is my how we define the power in terms of current. So carrier power is defined as IC square R. OK. We are IC is so uh, carrier current, just like we have the carrier voltage, and therefore PAM 
over PC turns out to be IT square over IC square. Now we know that it is uh, already PAM is nothing. It is given as PC 1 plus MA square by 2. That is something which you have just now learned. That that is the total power, which means uh, PAM over PC is equal to 1 plus MA square by 2. That is what we have learned. So if I have this expression, if I have this expression, now if I equate 1 and 2, what we get here, right hand side. So if I equate these two, I have to move to the next slides. Equating 1 and 2, if I, what we get here is IT square over IC square is equal to 1 plus MA square by 2. Just see this one. IT square over IC square is equal to 1 plus MA square by 2. Straightforward. Or I could write down this as IT, that is the total current in AM is nothing, it is IC and root of 1 plus MA square by 2. So if you are speaking in terms of the current, this is how we got it. So this is the total current in the AM transmitter. Okay. So I could also write down this expression as IT over IC is equal to under root of 1 plus MA square by 2 or, oh sorry, this is already we have got it. I remove this. This is already we have written. So if I see this expression, uh, it means uh, uh, MA square is equal to m square by 2 is equal to it square over ic square minus 1. So basically just playing with the same equation but in the form of it and ic which gives me modulation index in terms of current as under root of 2 it square over ic square minus 1. So it is straightforward. Nothing great is there but yes uh, that is how I can measure the uh, current of the AM wave and current of the carrier. So IT is the current of the carrier, I see. So this is we can find like this. Let's take an example based on this uh, to make the story complete. I always stress on the example as I am saying to give you a clear picture. So uh, uh, let uh, I have... Uh, mm, current of AM transmitter which normally comes through the antenna is 8 ampere. So this is ampere what we call huh? 8 ampere. Uh -huh. When only carrier is transmitted. Okay. And it increases to 8.93 ampere. Current increases to 8.3 ampere. This is our power being increased over 100 watt carrier. And 150 watt. When carrier is modulated by a uh, sinusoidal signal. Okay, some sinusoidal signal. So we need to find the modulation index and let's say you have to determine the antenna current when modulation index is changed to 0.8 okay so how to solve this is very straightforward so how to solve for that your, because we are dealing with the current, so we have to use this expression 2 over, uh, sorry, 2 was inside. to IT square by IC square minus 1. So it turns out to be 2, 8.93 square over 8 square, okay. That is given to me, the current of the AM transmitter, uh, 
IC is given to be 8 ampere. So this is nothing. This is your given the IC, the current of the AM transmitter and minus 1. So it turns out to be 0.7. That is 70% modulation. Okay. So this is the A part. Now, in the B, we use this equation, IT is equal to IC, 1 plus MA square by 2. So, in this case, it turns out to be 8. 8 is given to your IC. This is the IC given to you. And this is uh, the total current. Uh, it becomes uh, 1 plus... Uh, Mm. MA with, uh, is given to be 0.8. This is the MA given to you. So 0.8 square by 2. So it turns out to be 9.2 ampere. Ampere. So if I change, so with the antenna current of 8.93 ampere and modulation index was 0.7, but when I change my modulation index to 0.8, the antenna current changes to 9.8 ampere. Okay, so that was all about, uh, but we really speak in terms of current. Voltage only is sufficient for mathematical this thing. But what we actually transmit is the power. So what we have learned today is some limitations. So we talked about AM. So we talked about the advantages of modulation. But we first took the case of amplitude modulation, okay, where we change the amplitude of the carrier in accordance with the amplitude of the message signal at every instant. So, what are the limitations of this one? First is what we call the, I use different color. First thing what we have learned is uh, uh, low transmitted power efficiency is very low that means it is uh, uh, because uh, your useful power lies in the sideband sidebands and which is quite small which is quite small okay so transmission efficiency is very poor, as we have seen. Second thing is what we call, uh, uh, we have seen that 33% uh, efficiency at 100% modulation. So it is very low, 100% modulation we desire. But even with that, the transmission efficiency was found to be 33%. Uh, because out of 150 watt, 100 watt goes into carrier. That means two third and one third goes into uh, the side frequencies which are containing the information fm second uh, disadvantage is it has got a poor reception quality am radio it's poor reception quality uh, because uh, your bandwidth uh, that is assigned is of the order of 10 kilohertz because typically our speech frequency is 5 kilohertz uh, so uh, we highest frequency is typically taken as 5 kilohertz. So your bandwidth is nothing. It is uh, twice of FM, So which is very small. And uh, uh, one station may interfere with the other station. As you've seen, one station frequency may interfere with the other frequency because they are close. Other station will come just after 5 kilohertz. Because total 10 close by bandwidth, 5 close on this side, 5 close on this side. May interfere with other station frequency. And that's why I've seen uh, that there could be a splattering also. It goes to the other frequency. Third, also, which we have not talked about the noise part. But when we discuss the noise also, uh, this uh, AM signal is quite noisy. Noisy signal reception. Why? Because again, the stations are very close and so on. Uh, and 
योर एक्चुअल जो सिग्नल की वो है साइड फ्रीक्वेंसी उसमें पावर बहुत कम है दैट मीन्स इट इज इक्वल टू द नॉइस पावर सो एंड बिकॉज इट इज इक्वल टू द नॉइस पावर जो कि वो भी बहुत कम होती है इंटरफेरेंस वगैरह के हिसाब से जो होता है सो योर ई एम विल नॉट बी एबल टू डिस्टिंग्विश बिटवीन द मैसेज सिग्नल पावर एंड द एक्सटर्नल नॉइस पावर विच इज ऑल्सो वेरी लो एंड योर कैरियर पावर इज ऑल्सो वेरी लो और सॉरी एफ एम इज ऑल्सो वेरी लो एंड द फोर्थ इज वॉट वी कॉल द लिमिटेड ऑपरेटिंग रेडियो रेंज अगेन इट इज बिकॉज ऑफ द ड्यू टू पुअर एफिशियंसी ओके सो बिकॉज ऑफ पुअर एफिशियंसी यू कैन ट्रांसमिट ओवर द लॉन्ग डिस्टेंसेस विदाउट इंक्रीजिंग द ट्रांसमिटर पावर ओके so these are some of the advan- disadvantages of the am system now what we have seen is uh, uh, this uh, am has one side uh, one carrier and two side frequencies okay two side bands so this am is also called the uh, double side band carrier uh, double side band and carrier okay modulation now we'll move to the in the next lecture uh, we'll talk about double sideband suppressed carrier that means uh, carrier is important for me but carrier is uh, uh, wasting a lot of power is wasted in the carrier so if i suppress the carrier okay i am not totally i can't totally ignore the carrier because carrier is required for the uh, transmission of the uh, message signal but if i can suppress the carrier there are ways to suppress the carrier and still i use the carrier frequency to carry my message frequency okay then we have another form of modulation which is called the double sideband suppressed carrier because i in the am modulation is ordinary am modulation is nothing it is a two sideband and the carrier but what you have seen carrier lot of power is wasted so if i suppress the power carrier frequency is still there but if i suppress the power of the carrier then i will have another form of modulation which is called a double sideband suppressed carrier that means the two side bands will be there but a suppressed carrier this we'll discuss in the next lecture and what is the advantage of this we'll get it we'll understand so i save it i think just uh, give me time by this weekend i will form the group now we have got the ids it is 173 onwards uh, for the btec 2020 section b batch and i will uh post all my lectures including the video recording if it turns out to be good uh of all the s- lectures done so far by this weekend okay so we got the list uh, two three days back one day back only and that's why we have formed the groups for your lab exercise with the ta assigned to you so tomorrow we'll have the lab session okay so with that any doubt here nothing in the chat box i could see uh Okay. Otherwise, you can ask me any time. I will end the call here and post the notes for you. Okay. So my notes, more this um, uh, notes are more than sufficient for you. But you can look for any book or any resource which you get in the internet that will be fine just to update your knowledge. Uh, because I understand uh, the prescribed book you may not be able to look forward to. But yes, you can look any book which is you find comfortable with. Okay. Fine. Otherwise, my notes are more than sufficient. So I will end the call here and. Uh, this thing stop the recording for you. Yeah.